In a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of the many fine programs brought to you Sundays on NBC. Later this evening, listen to the NBC Star Playhouse with Leatrice Joy and Jeffrey Lynn. Here, Meet the Press, America's number one newsmaking program. And be sure to keep tuned for the dramatic story of communism in America on Last Man Out. A wonderful lineup of great programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Sick Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the sick shooter. The NBC radio network presents James Stewart as the sick shooter. A transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett. Texas plainsman who wandered through the western territories, leaving behind a trail of still-remembered legends. It had snowed during the night, a thick, wet snow that bowed the pine trees and banked over the pink boulders, turning them white. I found myself lying under a good, heavy six inches of it when I woke up. Oh, gee whiz. <laughs> Old Scar, he looked like a white-whiskered burrow over there, standing beside what was left of the campfire, trying to shake himself dry. No, all right, all right, take it easy, boy. I'll just wait till I get the fire started again. The wood I'd gathered up the night before was pretty wet, so I got a hand axe out of my pack, and I headed over toward a little hill about a quarter of a mile away. Since the wind had been from the north, I figured some of the brush on the far side might still be drying up for burning. Yeah. It wasn't very easy climbing. A couple of times I went in and way over my knees. But the snow was already beginning to melt fast, even though the sun hadn't splashed into the sky yet. And that meant we'd be able to start off in an hour or so. By then, the stuff would be thinned down to mostly mud and water. I hit the crest of the hill and looked around. The south side sliced away at a good sharp angle, and the ground was fairly dry. I spotted a couple of dead oak saplings lying on the ground about ten feet below me. It seemed likely they'd catch fire without too much trouble. I was kind of surprised to find oaks growing at this altitude. Even so, I thought... Huh. Huh, there's some bothering scar, huh? Probably a jackrabbit or squirrel or something. Ah, sure was making a lot of racket. Hmm. Wouldn't like him to get upset unless... Well, well, that wasn't a jackrabbit. There's a whole lot more than that. I dropped my axe and I climbed back to the top of the hill as fast as I could climb. The sun was inching over the rim of Spooner Range. And first the reflection off the snow blinded me. When I got my eyes focused, I... I saw the fellow standing beside Scar, trying to cinch the saddle onto his back. Hey, hey, you! Hey, let that horse alone! He looked up, and for a minute he just stood there, as though he didn't know exactly what to do next. Then he jerked the leather tight, and he put his foot in the stirrup. Scar wasn't being very helpful, but it didn't keep the fellow from mounting up. I knew I couldn't make it through the snow before they rode off, and I... Sure didn't like the idea of chancing a shot, not with Scar rearing the way he was. But I didn't have much choice. I... <clears throat> My first shot was wide, oh, maybe five, six feet, and Scar was taking the spur and sort of starting to move in spite of himself. And another minute or two, they'd be out of range. <clears throat> now, that was a little close, but not close enough. And... <clears throat> nah. Bullet must have caught the fellow high on the leg. He twisted around, tried to get a hold of the pole, but he, his fingers slipped off, and I saw him slide into the snow. I couldn't see whether he had a gun or not, but I found out soon enough. I dived behind a clump of pine. There was a clearing between us, and he was using a boulder for cover. A little spray of snow told me I'd chipped the rock right in front of him. 
I waited for him to answer my fire, but there wasn't a sound from that side. Maybe he was just waiting, too, hoping I'd get anxious and come out in the open. Well, I wasn't going to be that obliging. He still didn't answer. I reloaded my gun. I edged over to the right. If I could just circle without him seeing me, maybe I could come up behind him. About 20 minutes later, I managed to skirt around the clearing. He was up front of me now, just a couple of boulders away. I got up on my haunches and I charged. And then I, I saw why I'd been so quiet. He was sprawled out face down on the snow, staining it red. It wasn't just his leg that was doing the bleeding, either. There was a bullet hole in the small of his back, and the piece of cloth fastened over it had come loose. His gun was lying beside him, within easy reach. I picked it up. There was still one bullet that hadn't been fired. He started coming, too, and I eased him over on his side, and his eyes kind of half opened, and... It's just like his lids were too heavy for him to rise all the way. Uh, There's still a lot of things in my time, but... I ain't never been a horse thief before. All right, you better take it easy. What's the difference? I'm not gonna pull out of this any... I guess I'm lucky. Dying here's a whole lot... Better than being caught. I always said they'd never hang me. All their rewards, wanted posters. Just a waste of time. I told them they'd never hang Ace Tressler. Tressler? You heard of me, ain't you? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of you. Every. Everybody's heard of Ace Dressler. <laughs> One way or another. <laughs> Too bad it was your shot that did it, mister. You could collect a mighty fancy reward. About $3,000. It must total up to... <laughs> and that's not counting Yesterday? Yesterday? Stage depot. Over to sunset. Fell in charge. He... He... He didn't like the idea of being held up. That's how I got this bullet in my back. Oh? But I took care of him. He won't be shooting nobody else. You killed Sam Fletcher? I don't know his name, mister. You don't expect a fella to know the names of all the men he shoots, do you? How'd you get out here without a horse? It's a good 20 miles from sunset. I... I had my pony till just a couple of hours ago. All that snow coming down, he so, sort of missed his foot. Hurt himself bad. I'd say. Huh? I sure hated having put him out of his misery. He was... He was a fine horse. Best I have owned. He... It's a rotten shame. Man, having to kill a horse like that. Yeah, yeah. That's the only reason I tried to take yours. I had to have some kind of mount... There's posse on my trail. I ain't never stole a horse before, mister. I ain't no horse thief. Well, you think you can hang on if I heist you onto the saddle? What for? Well, you need a doctor. Scar can carry us both. Only doctors and son say. That's right. I'd never make it that far. Get you? See, I'd never make it that far. Well, you can try. No. No, I'm not going back there. We might run into Posse along that way. Yeah, we might. He'd string me up. Even though there was 
I didn't string me in. And I swore that nobody'd hang me. I swore. All right, turn over on your face here. I'll put that bandage back. Listen, mister, you can't let him hang me. I'll be dead anyway. Just a few hours. You can stay here until... Until... And then you can take me back. You can say you done it. Collect a reward for yourself. Three... Three thousand dollars, miss. All right, come on, turn over. As long as I'm... And anyhow... Let me die out here. Why do you want to give me James to lynch me? Nobody's going to lynch you, Tressler. <laughs> give me your word. Yeah, yeah. You won't let me down, mister. I swear, I swore that you'd never hang a Tressler. You won't. <laughs> He passed out again. But he was still alive, still hanging on by a thread. I managed to get a couple of makeshift bandages fastened onto him. The bleeding seemed to have let up a little. His leg wasn't hurt too bad. The bullet just sort of went through the flesh, and it didn't look like it had broken anything. But the wound in his back well, was, was more serious. As far as I could tell, the bullet had just gone all the way into his chest. I, I, I picked him up, and I... Laid him across Scar's back. Then I looped a rope around his body and tried to fix it so that he wouldn't slide around too much. It wasn't going to be a very comfortable ride, but as long as he was unconscious, I wouldn't know it. All right, let's go, boy. Come on, come on. We uh, weren't able to make very good time with Scar carrying both of us through all that slush. It was almost two hours later before we came to the main sunset trail. And just as we turned on, I spotted the posse. At least what I figured was the posse. Five men loping along toward us from the east. Doc Prince headed the procession. He was the local dentist. And I recognized Ty Barstow and Frosty Ender right behind them. Two boys bringing up the rear. I didn't look familiar. They'd probably moved into sunset since the last time I was there. Whoa, boy. Whoa. Whoa, boy. Brit. Hello, Doc. <laughs> well, boys, what did I tell you? I said he was Brit Ponsett. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, sure Easy, did. girl. Easy. <laughs> I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Ponsett. I'm Cliff Slauson, and this year is Hard North. How are you? Hi. <laughs> yes, uh, I recognize you the minute you come into sight. I said, there's a six-shooter, I said. <laughs> yeah, I guess there's nothing the matter with my eyes. It uh, feels like you're carrying quite a load, Brit. <clears throat> what happened? It's Art Tressler. Huh? Tressler? No. Well, I'll be doggone. Let's see here. Yes, it's him, all right. At least ways it sure looks like them pictures on the posters. Well, if that don't take the cake. This neighborhood's getting to be a real outlaw's haven, I reckon. Well, maybe they'll change their mind about hanging around after they find out what happened today. Yeah. Yeah, we've done a pretty good job of taking in the welcome mat. <laughs> pretty good. Mm. If you ask me, we set a record. With Ponsett's uh, help, of course. Oh, you boys didn't need any help from me. You would have found Tressler yourselves for very long. Well, what are you talking about, Britt? We didn't have the faintest idea he was in these parts. I'm sure, we were already on our way back to town. You mean you mean you weren't looking for him? Of course not. Well, what are you doing out here, then? I, th- I thought you were a posse. We are a posse. But we were hunting George Revit. <laughs> Rabbit? Yeah, you remember him, don't you? Rob Phil Jeffers General Store a couple of years back. Almost killed old man Jeffers? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, sir, he broke out of jail a week ago. The one over to Polk City, and what do you think he did? He headed straight for Sunset, and he tried to pull another robbery. Yeah, only this time he did kill Sam Fletcher while he was at it. Now, now, just hold on a minute here, boys. Now, you're trying to tell me that you're looking for George Revit, and that you think he's responsible for the robbery at the stage depot last night. Think? <laughs> we know it, Britt. Of course yeah. we do. Uh, but we yeah. ain't looking for him anymore. We found him. What? Yeah, just a couple hours ago, hiding in a cabin over by Walnut Creek. That's right, and he won't be pulling no more holdups, neither. We saw to that. <laughs> no, 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 boys. Now, you better let me explain this, Britt. He uh, might think we was kind of hasty this morning. Yeah. It isn't as if we didn't give Rebbert a trial. A trial? Well, there was no doubt about his being guilty, Britt. <laughs> and seeing as how there's no judge in Sunset, and we'd have to wait till next spring for a formal hanging... 
Well, you sort of speeded things up a mite. You... You didn't string him up yourself. Well, not very high up. Just a couple of feet off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, boys, now, boys. Wait just a minute now. Now, uh, uh, now, Britt, there's no point in your looking so all-fired serious. There's nothing anybody can do about it now. Well, that's true enough, Doc. Yeah, there's nothing anybody can do. We'll return to James Stewart as the sick shooter in just a moment. Now, hear this. Within the next 20 seconds, a fire will break out somewhere in the United States. Lives may be lost, property damaged, homes or buildings destroyed. There are 4,600 fires in America every day of the year. They kill 11,000 persons and disfigure or severely burn thousands more. The unfortunate part of this picture is that most of these fires could be avoided. For example, 90% of all fires that start in the home can be traced to human carelessness. By obeying a few simple rules of fire prevention from now on, you and I can protect our homes and our families from this devastating menace. Rule one is, don't smoke in bed or discard lighted cigarettes carelessly. Rule two, go through your house and clean out old newspapers, magazines, and other inflammable debris. Rule three, promptly repair defective wiring as soon as you notice it. Fire won't wait until tomorrow. Rule four, use only those cleaning fluids which will not burn. And last but not least, be careful with matches. Keep them out of the reach of small children. Remember, it doesn't pay to gamble with fire. The odds are against you every time. Now, Act Two of The Sick Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. Well, I, I just didn't know what to say. I, Hayes Tressler hadn't been lying when he told me about robbing the depot and shooting Sam Fletcher. A man, man doesn't confess to something like that when he thinks he's ready to cash in, you know. And as for George Rabbit, oh, he'd caused folks trouble ever since he was a kid. He'd been mixed up in all sorts of gunfights, too. Fights that usually ended up with somebody else dying. But he hadn't killed Sam Fletcher. That's one thing he hadn't done. Looks like Tressler's still with us. Yeah. Well, I'd better get moving. Well, uh, you want us to take him into town for you, Britt? That's a good uh, idea. No, no, thanks. Uh, you see, I gave him my word that he was going to a medical doctor. I don't get you. You see, he was afraid he might be lynched. Well, we ain't got no grudge against Tressler, Britt. Oh, I guess he's as mean as they come, but he ain't never given us no bother in Sunset. Is that so? I told you. We didn't even know he was in these parts. Well, I guess you should have known a dog. Huh? He's the man who shot Sam Fletcher. Uh, what? uh, what's what's that? It? What's it? <laughs> oh, I know what you're up to, Britt. You're just joshing us. You're trying to make us feel like we've done something wrong and take care of George Rivet. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is that Tressler told me he held up the stage depot last night and he killed the fellow in charge. You ain't oh, serious. I'm about as serious as I can be. Oh, but, Britt, that don't make sense. Why, why it had to be Rivet. What made you so sure? Well, we knew he broke jail. And somebody said they thought they'd seen him in town yesterday. Now, let me see who... Oh, it was Johnny Silks, I think. Yeah, yeah, and we picked up his trail not far from the depot. Well, he led right to that cabin on Walnut Creek where we found him. He admit the robbery and the shooting? Well, you don't expect a man to admit a thing like that when he knows there's a rope waiting for him. Of course. Yeah. Well... Well, I'll see you. Oh, no, 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 wait, wait, now, hold on now, but you're wrong about this. Why, you just gotta be wrong. You think I'm lying, Doc? No, 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 of course not, Britt, but everything pointed to Revit. Well, maybe Tressler was just making that up, uh, what he told you. Well, how did he find out about the robbery, then? Well, I... Now, Britt, you know we wouldn't have done anything if we weren't certain in our own minds that we were right. Why, you know that. It's possible we made a mistake. Well, I'm not saying that we did, but it is possible. No. Well, even if we did, Revit deserved hanging. He's deserved it for a long time. Yeah. Sure. Yes, that's what I'm getting at. We didn't do any harm, Britt. Uh, not really. You didn't, huh? Oh, of course not. But but uh, if you were to tell folks about this, well, 
They might not see it our way. They, they might figure that we took too much on ourselves. Uh, so you won't say anything, will you? Well, all I'm doing is taking Tressler into town. Whatever he says after he gets there, that's up to him. Uh, well, I know, well, but don't I don't know... We don't need to worry about Tressler. He ain't going to say nothing. Huh? Well, take a look. Yeah, he was dying. Wasn't any doubt about that. I cut the rope that was holding him on the scar's back and carried him over to a dry space just off the trail. And just before I could put him down, he gave a little shudder, and I felt the life ease out of his body. Well, he'd been right about one thing. Nobody would ever hang Ace Tressler. Guess that saves your trip into Sunset, eh, Brett? Well, I was heading for there anyway, Frosty. Oh? As long as I've come this far, I might as well go the rest of the way. Well, I don't... Well, now, look here, Brett, uh... Ace is dead. Yeah? Well, then, don't you see that there's nobody to say whether it, he was the one who killed Sam Fletcher or not? Nobody but Brett. That's right. Now, now, now suppose we did go off half-cocked. Uh, suppose we were kind of hasty with Revit. Well, we're sorry about it, but there's nothing we can do for him now. It seems you told me that before. Well, it's the truth, ain't it? Sure. Well, then what would you gain by getting us into hot water? Letting people know that we kind of uh, uh, overstepped the mark? Is that what you call it? Overstepping the mark? Well, it'd be different if Revit was innocent. Well, somehow I got the idea that he was. Well, yes, of this robbery, maybe, but, uh, well, he... Uh, I had a brother, Ponsett. He'd be alive today if it wasn't for George Revit. Mm-hmm. Is that why you hung him, to get even for your brother? No, 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 of course not. We were just doing our duty as citizens. We thought he shot Sam Fletcher. Well, why, why are we standing here arguing? If Ponsett wants to try and make trouble, well, he ain't got no proof. It's his word against ours. That's right. Cliff's right. We can even say that Ruffett confessed. Why, everybody in Sunset will believe us. Well, then I don't see what you're so worried about. <laughs> well, we ain't worried, Britt. Not really, of course we're not. I know you pretty well. We've been friends a long time. Why, you're not going to go out of your way to stir up a hornet's nest? No, I'm sure of that. Well, I ain't so sure. Just a minute, Ponsett. You're not leaving here yet. Uh, now, Frost. And, boys, it's about time we start using our heads. If he goes into town and spreads this story around, they'll all believe it. Whatever Britt Ponsett says, that's gospel. But he ain't going to say anything. That's right, he ain't. Because he ain't riding into sunset. He's turning around heading east. Is that so? I, I know you're a fast man on the draw, but there's five of us. You're not that fast. No, I reckon I'm not. Now, we don't want to get into any mix-up with Brett Frosty. But... What do you want? People to start saying we murdered George Rabbit? Murdered? Well, that ain't what we done at all. His family might not agree with you, Cliff, if they found out the truth about that holdup last night. And he's got a brother, too. Well, maybe there is something in what Frosty says, but uh, we can't stop Britt. Now, he, if he takes it upon himself... We stopped Revit, didn't we? Uh, uh, Frosty? Put that gun away. Sure, I'll put it away. After I'm sure that Ponce is riding east. And I'm warning you, Britt. You ever breathe a word about what Tressler told you? I, I don't like being ordered around, Frosty. Then just keep away from the sunset. Now move. I said... Well, I held my ground. I knew Frosty Ender pretty well. I, I knew he wouldn't shoot. His business with Revit had pushed him into deep water, but not that deep. I watched his jaw muscles tighten up, and I saw a little bead of sweat begin to gather between his eyes, and for a minute, nobody said anything. And then Ty Barstow shoved forward and... I told you to put it away, Frosty. Wasn't what we already done today bad enough? You want to kill somebody else? We done nothing wrong. Get that through your skull, Ty. Rabbit deserved to hang and we hung him. What about Britt? Suppose he deserves being shot? No. No, not unless he asks for it. That gun you're holding just proves how wrong we were this morning. If we'd been right, you wouldn't need it. Shut up. If we'd been right, we wouldn't be standing here feeling ashamed. Even you feel ashamed. That's why you don't want nobody to hear about it. That's why you're threatening Brady. Yeah, and I'll make good on that threat, too. No, no, you won't. Because we're going into Sunset and tell him what happened. We're going to take our medicine. You've gone, loco. And it ain't just because Rabbit didn't kill Sam Fletcher, even if he had. No, well, he still wouldn't have been right. Oh, I reckon we wouldn't have found out so quick, but we'd have found out sooner or later. You know what's the matter with you, Ty? You're yellow. You got a streak a yard wide down your back. 
You were just as anxious to string up Revit as the rest of us. Things didn't turn out the way you figured. Yeah, that's true enough. Hey, Yellow, that's what you are. Clear through. You've got the gun, Frosty. You can stop me if you want to. Doc, you coming along? Yeah. Cliff, Harv, no kidding. Hey, you crazy fools. We didn't do nothing wrong. What's the matter with you? Hey, why can't you see that? Frosty kept on yelling until they were almost out of sight. And then he turned and shook his head like he couldn't figure out what had happened. I picked up Tressler's body and I laid it across Scar's back. And Frosty swung around and stared at me. If it hadn't been for you, folks would have said we'd done fine. Nobody would have known about Tressler. Why'd you have to meet up with him today? Why? Because it snowed last night and his pony stumbled and he needed another horse. That ain't no reason. No, maybe not, Frosty. Maybe not. You coming into town? Yeah. Let's go. Fifty thousand trained nurses are needed now, today. Nurses to serve humanity in hospitals and private duty, in teaching and research, in the Veterans Administration and the Armed Forces. And although a nurse's training means a thorough professional education at far less expense than four years of university, it offers a curriculum which includes such fascinating studies as psychology, sociology, and chemistry. And upon graduation, the student becomes a registered nurse and in some schools obtains a Bachelor of Science degree as well. These, then, are the facts of a nursing education. The need has never been greater. The opportunities for a vital, useful career have never been finer. For further information, we suggest that you contact your nearest hospital. The Sick Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Robert Griffin, Harry Bartell, Lamont Johnson, Howard McNear, and Forrest Lewis. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam. The entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Oh, by the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the sick shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. Tonight, listen to Sunday at Home on the NBC Radio Network.